Hey everybody, at home at Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today should be a fun video. We're going to take a look at these really interesting planar magnetic headphones from Hyphaman, the HE 400 SE. So sit back, relax, and we're going to talk about these cool headphones. He knows just the way to draw you inside. Old Guy Hi-Fi reviews what's new. Bringing back the past with a modern view. Stereo sound waves you won't deny. Taking us high with Old Guy Hi-Fi. So the HE400 SE from Hyphenman is a planar magnetic transducer headphone. And we'll talk about what that is in just a second. They weigh 385 grams. They are 91 dB sensitive at 32 ohms, and they have a frequency response of 20 to 20,000 hertz. Now it does come with a three and a half inch jack on the cup side, and it does come with a cable that has a three and a half inch with a quarter inch adapter on the input side. The headphones themselves are relatively comfortable. They are, the clamping force wasn't bad. The cups themselves are made of plastic, but the frame is all aluminum, and the headband itself was comfortable. I had no hot spot on it. The ear cups have a nice knit kind of feel to them. I did find after about an hour or so that my ears were getting a little bit sweaty, but not bad. And just word of warning, if you have a larger, an ear that protrudes more than mine does, there is kind of a grill or a grate uh, in the inside area that your ear might go up against. And I think it's part of the magnetic structure for the transducers. But anyway, not an issue there. Um, and again, lightweight and, and relatively comfortable. I didn't have any issues with them at all. So hopefully you're not having any issues with this video. And you'll consider giving me a like and a subscribe. I know I got to work on my segues a little bit. So what is a planar magnetic transducer? Well, it's a really interesting device. We all know what a cone speaker looks like, right? And that is a conical material, paper, polypropylene, whatever, that's driven from the center by a voice coil, but held in place by a surround on the outer edge. And there are times when the voice coil in the motor structure wants to push the cone further than the surround wants it wants to allow it to move, and you'll get some distortion in the shape of the cone, which then can cause distortions in what you hear and break up nodes on the surface of the cone. Now, home audio guys, you know, the speaker designers, all speaker designers spend a lot of time, effort, energy, and research and development money to develop cones that are very lightweight and very rigid. And then some of them have pattern textures in them or molded designs in them to help kind of break up that distortion that may occur on the surface of the cone. Well, a planar tran magnetic transducer is completely different. It is a thin film of mylar. Think of it as half of a sandwich bag plastic. It's much thinner than that and obviously more robust, but that piece of mylar is etched with copper wi wire on it. So kind of like the voice coil is on a flat surface. And then it's placed in a magnetic field and as voltage is applied to the copper on the mylar, it moves back and forth and you know, compresses or rarefies the air, creating sound. Now with the open back like this, it creates sound in both directions. So it's very open and transparent sounding. But the benefit of the planar uh, magnetic transducer is the diaphragm is super lightweight. So it's very low distortion. It's very fast. And at a hundred millimeters, this one has more surface area than most dynamic driver headphones do. Most are 40, 50 millimeters, maybe 60 millimeters. This at 100 millimeters has more area to create bass, to get more air moving and create lower frequencies better. So it does do a really good job with bass, no question about it. What are some of the drawbacks with a planar magnetic headphone? Well, some are very inefficient. This is 91 dB. It's not the most efficient thing in the world, but I had no issues with any of the headphone amplifiers I tried with it. Um, weight can be an issue on some of them. I'm Back in the day, I had a, a pair of Stax um, uh, electrostatic headphones, and they weighed a ton. And after about 30 minutes, your ears were just running with sweat. It was really uncomfortable, but they did sound good. And this very much reminds me of that sound, although it's been quite a long time since I heard those. Um, but so... Uh, you know, efficiency, size, weight. I had no issues with size, weight, any of that stuff with these. I think these are really well engineered. And again, just excellent, uh, an excellent execution for a, a planar magnetic transducer. So how did I test it? Well, the first go around, I used the Sparkos Gemini headphone amplifier that has a tube buffer in it. Now, when I was using it with these, I had the Electroharmonix 12BH7 tube in there. And that is a very warm sounding tube, very nice in harmonic distortions, uh, you know, all even order kind of stuff. And 
to give you an overall view of the sound quality of most planar magnetics, and especially the Hyphen HE400 SEs, it is very clean and very detailed. Now, don't it's not bright, it's not fatiguing, it's not strident, it's not, you know, hard to listen to. It's just very clean and detailed. Now, it doesn't lend itself toward warmth, but it doesn't lend itself toward coolness or, or like I said, any kind of edginess. With the tube buffer and the Gemini, man, that just added a little bit of smoothness to it. It's kind of in my wheelhouse for sonic signature, and it was really, really pleasant to listen to. And I listened to it a lot that way. So that was a good combination. By the way, I fed this with a Gishelli J2S. The best combination I found, though, was with Hi Feynman's own HE4, excuse me, EF400 uh, Himalaya R to R ladder DAC headphone amp preamp. It is remarkable, the resolution, and what a great pairing with this. The R to R ladder DACs have their own sonic character, very deep sound, good sound stage, and I'm not big on picking out soundstage and headphones because it kind of seems to occur a lot in my head, but it was just a remarkable combination with this, this amp and these headphones. So what did I listen to to test this stuff out? Well, the first recording I listened to was by an artist named Avishai Cohen and his band Vicious. And I'll put the, I forgot to memorize the, name, the title of the album. I'll put it down here. And it is, a, he's a, it's the trumpeter Avishai Cohen, not the bass player. It is an interesting mix of everything. If you took electrona, electronica, ambient, hip hop, um, any kind of psychedelica, uh, fusion jazz, regular conventional jazz, and you put it all in a blender and hit frappe, that's what you're going to get. It's really very much a jazz feel to it, but it is so interesting and so textured, and there's so many different things going on. The bass was really well produced. His bass player plays a big uh, Fender P bass, really sounded good and deep and just articulate, very textured. You could hear his fingertips on the strings. You could hear it when he slapped it. All of those things were all revealed very, very nicely. Kick drum was very well done right up into that upper uh, bass, lower mid bass area, clean, just clean and well detailed. And of course, with um, the trumpet, the trumpet can go a little bit low, can kind of get down into the male soprano area and then obviously much higher up uh, into the female vocal range. Trumpets and violins kind of very much like human voices as far as their frequency range. But the trumpet had a good bite to it. You could almost hear his breath coming out of the bell of the instrument. It was very, very detailed. These did a great job with that. Again, that wonderful detail, very, very clean, very accurate. That's a good recorded album, uh, Avishai Cohen's album and just sounded great. Instrument, instruments were all mic'd well and reproduced well. Very, very pleasing. Now, to get a little bit more kind of a mid-range body, I use this recording from Boz Skaggs, Out of the Blues. Boz Skaggs has been around for a very long time. He has a lot of road miles on him, and man, you can hear that in his voice. It's textured and nuanced and engaging and so characterful. It's just remarkable, and this is a great recording. Um, wonderful studio recording, but his voice was just so well rendered on this combination, but with his headphones, just wonderful. It's a great recording. If you like Bob Skaggs, or you just love good vocals, that's a great recording for that. To kind of get more up into the upper mid-range and more into the upper frequencies, I use this recording by Itzhak Perlman in the Israeli Philharmonic, Vivaldi's Four Seasons, and it's one other Vivaldi violin concerto. Now, Itzhak Perlman plays a Stradivarius violin, and that violin itself is known, and I don't remember the name of it. If I can find it, I'll put it down here. It is known for having a unique tone, and it does. You can hear the body of that violin so well, um, and his technique is just absolutely marvelous. His vibrato on the strings, just wonderful. You can hear the rosin on the bow on the strings, just beautiful. And as he plays and as that builds in the Four Seasons and it gets in the upper registers, um, obviously, the concert hall they recorded in was very large, and you get a good sense of the room, and you get good sense of air. This did an exceptional job in the upper frequencies, for sure. Really clean, very well detailed, very well rendered. That ladder deck helped immensely. It just did a fabulous job of just giving me all of the detail and all of the resolution I was looking for, but without any fatigue, without any stridency, without any kind of you know cringy, grady sort of sound at all. Just 
very clean, very detailed. I was very impressed. And at $109, I think these headphones are an absolute steal. Um, just an absolute steal. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully I can steal from you a like and a subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, there is a thank you button at the bottom of the video window. And if you wish to join the channel, there is a link in the pin description and in the video description. In the video description will be Amazon affiliate links. There will be an affiliate link to these headphones. I would appreciate it if you did use that. Again, there will be an affiliate link to a really nice set of balanced cable 4.4 and or XLR if you want uh, in that description as well, along with all the equipment I use um, and links to the albums I spoke of. Um, please comment or please let me know what you think. Are you a, a headphone listener? Do you want to be a headphone listener? What headphones do you have that you really enjoy? That's really, really important to me. I've asked you guys to share playlists with me. Please continue to do so. Check out the playlists in the community post. There is some wonderful music in there, and I have discovered some that I will be using in future reviews. Just wonderful stuff in that community post. So, again, please like, subscribe if you wish. Follow me on Instagram. Comment. Uh, please keep the comments friendly, professional, and, you know, nice. I think that's everything I've got to say. Um, yeah, I think it is. Again, the Hi Feynman HE 400 SE, really, really surprisingly good headphone and 109 bucks. I think just an absolute bargain for sure. Anyway, I'm Ed Holmwood. This is the Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. Now it's time for you to go listen to some wonderful music, maybe something on the community post playlist with a really good pair of headphones. Sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. Thank you guys so much for your time. I am grateful for it. Thank you. Have a great day.